What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Today we're back at it again, we're taking a look at how to get the Sleeper Simulant in Year 3. So whenever this weapon first came out, I searched all over the place for secrets, all over the place, to no avail, because it was all time gated. Basically there's an RNG element in the beginning, there are fusion cores that you end up picking up just randomly and giving to Banshee. Once you've done that, you get this first firewall mission, and you can now pick it from your director anytime you want. Before Bungie had it time gated, now it's going to be available to you after you deliver all of those fusion cores, those fusion fragments, those little mini fusion rifles that you end up picking up to Banshee. So you find them as just random drops, and now once you start this sleeper simulant mission, I'm just showing you this because these knights that are here, these regular hive knights and these taken knights, they're actually a key to a code that you actually need to unlock in just a few moments. You need four codes and these knights and taken knights end up giving you the key. If it's a regular hive knight, it's considered a one. If it's a taken knight, it's considered a two. So you've got these codes and there's going to be two lines. A regular knight would make you fill in the first block. A taken knight would make you fill in the second block. I'm not going to make you have to figure that out, we're going to show you the code exactly. I just wanted to showcase all of these different things because I thought it was kind of an interesting little easter egg that they had in there as far as how to go about figuring this thing out. After you kill all the knights, there's one boss, of course one Celestial Nighthawk with Deadeye, one shot, and that's dead. And yes, there apparently were going to be a number of other enemies spawning in to make that battle far more difficult, but killing the boss in one shot, that kind of makes that a lot easier. So after you end up finishing this first firewall mission, you pick up your little curious transceiver and you are on your way. So this is where I said we have to input the passcode. Like I said, there's going to be four of these. Again, if it was a regular knight, we would fill in the first box. If it was a taken knight, we would fill in our second box. I'm just going to fill in everything for you. So this is our first code and you don't have to worry about getting it wrong. If you get it right, you'll see that you get that little prompt at the bottom. You can select that and move on to the second code, which this one is. If you get it wrong, nothing happens. You literally won't get that final prompt. So you'll know that you got it right because you get that final prompt. There's no way to really mess this up. Here's the third code, again, getting just a little bit longer. It would have been really tricky to try to remember where all those knights were standing. Luckily, you don't have to do any of that. Third code is entered. And now we're on to our fourth and final code, which is definitely shorter. It's basically alternating one of each almost all the way down the line. Once you select this final fourth code and turn it in, boom, you're ready to go. Your curious transceiver is now broadcasting. Now that you're broadcasting, your next step is available. It's pretty much another mission. We just go over to Earth and a new story mission popped up. It's a shadow call, but it's pretty much a modified version of the Cade Stash story mission except for the fact that you spawn in midway through and you have a four minute timer to get it done. It's really not going to be that tricky at all for you though because you don't need to fight everything in there. You can run through as much of it as you want and as soon as you kill these final three wizards, it's all over. You ended up completing it. And you'll see right here, one Galahorn rocket, that's enough to take down this wizard on its own. So you shouldn't have any problem at all. As soon as you finish that, you get a fusion core. And now it's time to move on to what might take you the longest for all of this. Because in this fusion core, you've got to do five things. For starters, you have to go to the archive story mission and complete it. You end up needing a heavy power coupling. And what this is, is basically dismantling a legendary heavy weapon. Then you have to find the warsat and complete it on Earth, the Moon, and Mars. And that's where your time is going to be spent, for sure. I always get started by doing my Venus story mission and I'm lucky enough to have a checkpoint. A checkpoint is completely fine, in fact I'm just going to resume and whenever I do that it doesn't matter if it's the easy mode, easy, normal, right at the beginning of the end, that's all I did. I basically spawned in, I killed the final wave of enemies, I put this in, my ghost he's ready to scan and once I do that, once the ghost is finished scanning, this part is going to be over. So if you happen to have a checkpoint you're good to go. Otherwise, just do the complete mission, and you don't need to do it on hard. Normal works just fine. As I ended up completing it, you have to go into your fusion core and then select it. Basically pop it. It's done. We can move on to our next step. So what I'm going to do is start looking for warsats. And trust me, this part still stinks. 
Now I was looking at Destiny public events, I was using the tracker, it was still tricky, it was still a pain in the butt. I found the moon no problem, the moon was pretty easy. On Earth, it just seemed like I was having trouble getting the war sets to spawn in, and of course on Mars, that one definitely is tricky, though I did find the war set on Mars far quicker than I found it whenever I got my sleeper the first time. Yeah, this one kind of stinks a little bit, but each time you end up completing and finishing a war set, you can go ahead over to your fusion core, pop it in, and be good to go. One final thing, and this is a little bit of a trick from year one, if you're solo and you don't want to potentially fight all the crazy enemies, don't kill the enemies. Just leave one weak drag or shank alive, and at the 25% intervals, 25, 50, 75%, that enemy will despawn and the next wave will spawn in. That can help you from having to deal with a bunch of major enemies at once. Now the reason why I saved my heavy power coupling until last was, I wanted to see if I happened to get any drops. And sure enough, I did. I got a Cleric Dragon, it's legendary, that's exactly what I need. Though of course, it's got Tripod, and it has Cluster Bombs. I wanted to check to see if it had Field Scout, it doesn't. So people really won't get too salty about me dismantling it. I know that's all the rage right now, but Sleeper Simulant, that's the reason why we're here. And there it is, as soon as I dismantle it, I get my heavy power coupling, and that means I can go back to my fusion core, and then I can finally fill in the final node. There it is, we select that, and now we can reactivate the core. After reactivating the core, pretty much you need to go speak to Banshee. Everything in this story mission, this quest, pretty much revolves around Banshee, so if you're confused, go over to Banshee, he might have something for you. Whenever we turn this in, well, there's really not much to do right now. After turning it in, we just get no further prompts, no further information at all. In fact, the only thing we can do is sit and wait. There's nothing else you can do but wait. But honestly, please don't sit here and wait. Please don't sit here and wait. You end up having to come back to Banshee the next day. So the next day after you turn in your fusion core, go over to Banshee, approach him, and he will send you on your final parts of this mission. So there it is, a new quest, accept it, and now you're gonna have to buckle up just a little bit because you've got a mission that's going to be a little bit difficult. So right here, we end up getting our Fallen Saber Strike at 280 light, it's a modified strike, and it's actually matchmaking. That's going to be both a blessing and a curse for you. Now I actually had to matchmake this thing twice, and it didn't take that long for them to find people for me either time. That's how I know that there are a lot of people that are still out there looking for the sleeper. Though the first time, man, I was with people with Grimoire scores in the mid to high 4000s, and it was bad. The group I'm with right now, their Grimoire score was really low, their loadouts were really crazy, but we ended up beating it no problem. So don't get freaked out by what you see as far as people whenever you're matchmaking with them because they might turn out to be competent players. Just make sure you yourself have stuff on that's going to help benefit your team. Don't be afraid to use your super. Please don't be afraid to use your heavy. I found at this Warsat spot that having a Dark Drinker, having an Exotic Sword was really nice because it really helped to burst down enemies as they ran in. And that's going to be key because so many enemies here and my Galahorn, it simply wasn't cutting it at this stage. It simply was not cutting it. The sword, though, worked out far, far better. And don't be fooled. It might be 280 light, but this is going to test you for sure. Anybody that played the Warsat mission back whenever it first came out knows how tricky and how difficult this used to be. So we ended up completing it. Everybody's dead, and I just have to run away. I know that we ended up completing it, and we would still be okay even if I died, but I'm not even going to risk it. I'm going to live to fight another day and move on. That's by far the hardest part of the mission. You just continue on fighting it just like normal, and whenever you get to the final boss, you obviously need to take him down. No special modifiers. But if I was you, and I'm with two random blueberries, for the majority of the fight, spend your focus on killing the ads. The blueberries are for sure going to shoot Frank the Shank. You're not really going to have to worry about that, but there's exploder shanks and repeater shanks, those various sniper shanks that are coming around, you're going to have to deal with those things because if you don't, they're going to wipe your teammates and then they're going to wipe you when you're the last guardian alive. If you do that, you take care of the ads, you kill Frank the shank, you end up getting yourselves the sleeper simulant weapon frame, and it's just a short trip to getting this weapon finally. What we need to do, of course, is go talk to Banshee. 
So here's Banshee. As soon as you bring him in the frame, he's got the weapon for you immediately. That whopping 290 light sleeper simulant. Now back whenever this first arrived, people were justifiably a little bit salty because everybody was searching for this as a secret, but it was pretty much just behind a time gate. And the mission is going to take you two days. There's no way of getting around that because you have to wait for Banshee to bring it back. But whenever you've got it, you've got a weapon that's going to help you take down Atheon no problem. So plenty of people have done reviews on the sleeper. We're definitely not here to do that. We were here to get you through the entire mission and then just fire off the weapon a little bit just in case you've never fired it off. It's basically a laser beam that bounces around. Unfortunately, it's as good out of the box as it is whenever it's fully leveled. Nothing really changes with it, though you have to be a little bit careful because sometimes whenever you fire off the sleeper simulant, because the bolts end up bouncing around, the laser beam can shoot you in just one shot, absolutely wreck you and destroy you. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen whether you want it to or not. And even if you actually want it to happen, because right now I feel like I absolutely have to finish myself off with my final bullet, I can't even do it. Point blank range, can't do it. Across the room, I can. Sad Guardian is sad. But yet again, we're actually pretty happy because we just picked up the mission, we ended up picking up the weapon, and now we've got the awesome exotic heavy fusion rifle. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your sleeper, and I'll see you around in Destiny. Hashtag one shot on me.